guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a week of meal prep for you guys. It is Sunday night and I'm about to prep all our meals for this week. I'm making three like major dinners as well as some hummus, which I like to have on hand just for healthy snacking. And this will pretty much take us through the week because we'll have one night of leftovers or just like an easy meal and then we usually go out or order in for one night. Or sometimes I like to cook a fresh meal for Shabbat. So this is going to be our week of meals. I hope we give you guys some inspiration. I know January is a great time for creating these kind of plans in your home to meal prep and get ready for the week and have some healthy meals for the week. All of these recipes are kosher, at least they're modified to be kosher the way I'm cooking them. I'll put links in the description so you guys can get all the details below. If you see anything that's not kosher, you can just refer to their video and how I um, substituted or changed the recipe to make it kosher. Okay, so let's jump in. It is now seven o'clock. My babies are sleeping. I'm ready to go. I'm hoping to have this done by about 9 p.m. tonight. We'll see how it goes and we'll have all our dinners for the week. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Mary and I make videos about being a mom, being a Jewish mom. So give this video a big thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of my videos. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my day-to-day mom life all right let's jump in i'm gonna show you guys what i got going on okay so this is literally how i meal plan it doesn't get any fancier than this i'm doing a chickle chickle pie a chicken pie a lentil stew and a spaghetti buffalo squash um baked dish the chicken um fajitas by the way it's um tofu chorizo before you freak out um is also like on standby i just make sure to buy the ingredients for that but i don't do any prepping for that one so those are our meals for the week everything i have um that i got at the grocery store for them and i'm going to start with the oh and also the hummus so let me just show you guys that really quickly so for the hummus, I use garbanzo beans, tahini, lemon juice, paprika, salt and pepper, and I just mash it all by hand. So I'll be doing that as I go along. It also, I like doing this in case I get hungry as I'm going, so I have a little snack for myself. But the first recipe I'm really gonna show you guys is this chicken pie. Um, so all you're going to need is mushrooms, half an onion or spring onion, an egg, flour. Would you believe I'm out of flour, but I found this um, rice flour in my kitchen, so I'm hoping I'll do the trick. Brown mustard, um, then I've got chicken broth, and then some spices, thyme, and tarragon, and then puff pastry, and I just need the chicken. So base, so basically my kitchen is prepped to make the three meals. These are the other two recipes, which I'll get into in a little bit. This is the lentil soup. This is the spaghetti squash dish. And then I'm just pulling out of my refrigerator all of the cold ingredients that I need for these recipes. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my chicken pie recipe, but I'm before I jump into that, I'm going to start roasting my spaghetti squash for my buffalo chicken spaghetti squash like casserole dish, um, because that's gonna take the longest to cook. Okay, let's jump in. So my little hack for cooking spaghetti squash is to just puncture it with a few holes and put it in the microwave for like a minute it makes it a lot easier to slice in half before you roast it. And I've also preheated my oven to 400 degrees. I'm going to roast the spaghetti squash for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'll check on it. Um, it, it is fully cooked before it goes into the casserole. Okay, so all I've done is sliced the spaghetti squash in half and sprinkled olive oil, salt, and pepper in, in it, and then I'm putting it on my roasting tray at 400 degrees. I'm gonna pop that in the oven now, and then I'm going to start on the chicken pie. I was just chopping some mushrooms while this was in the microwave, um, but next I'm actually gonna start with the chicken. Hold on, let me put this in, then I'll explain it to you guys. Okay. 
Okay, so when I'm meal prepping, I like to make one vegetable cutting board, which is my huge wooden one, so that works really well for me. That way I know I can use the knife, you know, multiple times and the board multiple times, everything's fine. When I'm gonna be cutting chicken, I'm gonna use a separate cutting board that I'm gonna put straight in the um, kitchen sink. So to make the chicken pie, I'm going to cube the chicken and then I'm going to start cooking it on a frying pan on my stove top. So I'm gonna start that right now and then as the chicken cooks, I'm gonna chop up the veggies for the pie. And I'm also going to be using a separate knife for the chicken and this will go in the sink right away as well. Okay, so I'm about to start cooking the chicken in the pan with the olive oil and I'm making my first kosher substitute. So the recipe says to use butter, but you can't use butter with chicken or it wouldn't be kosher. So I'm using a vegan spread instead just to give it a buttery taste as well as the olive oil. If you don't have like a margarine or vegan spread, you can just omit that. And now I'm just going to add the flour, mustard, and seasoning and spices to this mixture and let it cook through some more. Okay, the chicken's almost cooked. The last thing I'm going to add to the mixture is 300 milliliters of chicken stock. Sorry I have everything in milliliters. I'm using a British recipe right now, um, but I have milliliters on my little measuring cup, so I'm good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pour this in. The recipe calls for creme fraiche with this, so obviously that's not kosher, so we won't be using creme fraiche in this recipe. I'm just omitting, omitting, I'm just omitting it. So it's definitely gonna be less rich and probably a little bit less tasty than the original, but that's totally fine. It's still gonna be delicious and yummy. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that to simmer and I'm gonna work on my puff pastry topping for the top of the pie. All I have to do is roll it out and score it and then I think I'm gonna brush it with egg wash. So the pie is ready to go. I'm going to pop it in the oven, which is already at 400 degrees, cooking the spaghetti squash. And this is going to cook for about 15, 20 minutes. You just want to make sure the puff pastry gets brown because everything inside the pie is already cooked. So now that I've got that baking, I'm going to move on to my hummus, and then I'm going next to jump into the lentil soup. So it's kind of like a break between the two bigger recipes to do the hummus. So I love making my own hummus at home. It's super easy, very healthy, and all I'm going to do is mash up the garbanzo beans, add some tahini, put some fresh lemon juice on, salt, pepper, and paprika, maybe a little garlic if you have it, and then you're good to go. Keep it in the fridge. It lasts about a week. It's so good. Oh, by the way, I like my hummus very chunky, which is why I mash it by hand. If you like too creamy, you could put it in a food processor or like one of those hand ones, and that would give you that same creamy hummus texture.
be making my lentil and sausage stew. This is one of my all-time favorite winter recipes. It is so, so good. If y'all don't like lentils, you're missing out. This is such a good recipe. Perfect for winter time, really warm and comforting. And I'll show you guys the ingredients right now. For the lentil stew, you just need lentils, spinach, peas. I just add, I don't think they're in the original recipe. Celery, carrots, onion, um, beef broth or chicken soup mix, which I have. Then I'm going to be using these um, tofu sausages, if they'll focus. Um, but you can use regular sausage as well. And then white wine vinegar, ketchup, and wine. And then the key um, to this ingredients for me really is the spice marjoram. Um, I don't really know how to describe it, but it just gives it such a real depth of flavor. And then um, I also use garlic powder in it and salt and pepper. Okay, so let's get started. This is kind of a long one, so I'm gonna do a lot of it um, speeded up. But um, as you'll see, it's not too, too complicated and it's so good. And I'm gonna be using my um, Dutch oven La Crusette for this. And I'll just store it in the refrigerator, I think in Tupperware and some in the freezer probably. took out the chicken pie from the oven and it is gorgeous people look at this beauty so it did come out like a little bit more puffed up but since it's been sitting on the counter it just um, subdued itself a little bit but I think that is pretty beautiful so I'll just show you guys a little bit of a peek if I can into the pie that looks so good um, so that is one recipe totally done, as well as the hummus. And I also took out the um, spaghetti squash from the oven. That one beeped as well. And I just flipped it over and I took out the seeds. Most people take them out before they cook them, but I kind of like to eat them. <laughs> so um, I just keep them in there and then take them out afterward and sometimes I snack on them. And to make sure it's done, you just want to use your fork and make sure you're able to go like this because you're going to take out all the squash from its um, skin. So I'm just going to let this rest and cool and I'm going to keep going with my lentil soup. Here are the lentils, by the way, just simmering away. And now I'm going to chop and now I'm going to chop up these veggies to put in there. sausage it breaks up more than regular sausage would so I'm just gonna leave that and add it in at the very end with the other fresh ingredients like the spinach so I'm just gonna let that cook and become a delicious soup it is now 8 13 I just did a little bit of a reset to clean up a little bit in the kitchen um, in between the recipes I just sort of clean as I go it makes it easier I also choose recipes that don't have a lot of like 
multiple pots and pans and stuff so it's really not even that bad I haven't even washed any dishes yet um, but I just like put some extra ingredients away and stuff like that and got everything together that I need for the buffalo chicken casserole so this is actually a really healthy dish um, because it's mostly spaghetti squash vegetables and some chicken so if you're looking for healthier recipes or recipes that don't have carbs in them or you know that kind of stuff um, this might even be whole 30 approved hey well, could you make less noise please Okay, so this is a really healthy and delicious recipe. I actually got it from my friend who was doing a Whole30 diet, so I can't 100% confirm that this is Whole30 compliant because I don't know the ins and outs of that, but I think it is. At least look into it if you're doing it. So I'm just gonna shred the spaghetti squash, shred the spaghetti squash with some forks, chop up the veggies, get them going in a saute pan. Then I have some pre-cooked chicken that I actually took out of my freezer, freezer earlier today. Um, if I didn't already have this, I would have just roasted the chicken with the spaghetti squash and then chopped it up and it would have been the same but I had this and I wanted to use it anyways so that's what I got going on then I have a little bit of mayo some eggs the um, Frank's Red Hot Buffalo sauce and some garlic and I think that's it so the only thing I don't have for this recipe is an onion because I was supposed to save half of it from my lentil recipe but that's totally fine it's still gonna taste delicious I'm not worried so let's get moving on chopping the veggies shredding the spaghetti squash sauteing it cooking it into a delicious casserole the pan with the carrots and celery and the missing onion to it and that's going. Um, now that I've shredded my spaghetti squash, I just added the mayo and I'm going to add the red hot. I need half a cup. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix this and add in the eggs. I will warn you guys, this does not look that appetizing as you're making it, but it is so good. I have made it a lot of times. Um, so, by the way, I'm going to add in the veggies and the chicken into this. Before I add in the eggs, I'm going to beat them together and then add them in. In order to not have to mess up another bowl and to make sure the eggs don't scramble, I'm going to let things cool down by putting everything in here into the casserole dish, beating the eggs in this bowl and then folding them in into the casserole dish. Then I'm going to bake it at 350 degrees for 45 minutes and then I'll be all done. spinach, peas, ketchup, red wine vinegar, I think that's it, and then just season it to taste as well as I'll add back in the sausage. So if you were going to serve this, you would do this right before serving it as well. Just finished off the soup. It is so hearty and delicious. Yes, I did some sampling. I also sampled the chicken pot pie, by the way. Me and my husband had like a second late dinner because it was just so good. Um, so I'm going to spoon the soup into storage containers and then my um, 
chicken casserole, buffalo chicken casserole should be done. I'll just tackle the dishes. I'll show you guys how much dishes I have just so you get a sense of like what this took. I don't think it's that bad. This is honestly how it looks. The big cutting board, one pan, one pot, and that's really it. I mean, there's also this soup pot that I'll have, but that's not that bad. The two casserole dishes, which will um, be refrigerating and that's really it okay so let me spoon this off so what I'm going so what I'm going to do is fill two of these for our freezer and then keep the rest to eat during the week okay so here is the chicken buffalo casserole out of the oven looking delicious and here is everything I made tonight yes I mentioned me and my husband had a piece of that this is so so good by the way so yeah, those are all three meals plus a little snack done for the week. So that is my meal prep for the week all done. Thank you guys so much for watching this. By the way, I wanted to say that I was inspired to make this video by Tiffany Beeston. I hope I'm saying her name right. I love her channel and she does lots of weekly meal prep videos. So definitely check her out. And um, it is 8.45, so I am perfectly on time. It took two hours total once I do clean up, which hopefully won't take more than 15 minutes um, to do all of this. And we are set for dinner for the week, which is really nice. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.